Hi guys, we have a guest today. You know that I say that a fulfilling life is all about relationships. Well, I don't just mean romantic relationships. I mean relationships with everything. So we are one, we are everything. And to be the living embodiment of that, you have to have a life in relationship with everything. And today my guest is gonna be talking about our relationship with food. Aaron Smith is the founder, producer, and host of What We Crave, the Emotional Eating Summit. After 25 years of struggling with emotional eating, food addiction, and shame fasting, Aaron became obsessed with understanding the root cause of what it is that we really crave. She is on fire for cultivating real, beautiful, honest con conversations that provide roadmaps to healing and how to make peace with food and ultimately yourself. Aaron has worked with leading health experts such as Dr. Zach Bush, Dr. Christine Schaffner, Dr. Dan Pompa, and Mark Groves, as well as a list of high-level celebrity health experts. And now she's here talking to us. Welcome, Erin. Thanks for being here. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me. So good to be with you. It was so pleasure. fun. <laughs> I can't wait to hear all you have to share. Um, but what I'd like to start with is um, how did you get in a 25-year cycle and, and how did you get out? Right. Gosh. Well, in, in a very quick snapshot, take you back a quick time machine. It was all kind of just in my story from childhood. I mean, I grew up um, very scrawny and skinny and was made fun of a lot for being super, super skinny. I was just a late bloomer. Grew up in that 80s Goonies life, you know, just like eating the processed food and had no <laughs> idea, you know, about nutrition before the internet. <laughs> and uh, my mom was Italian and she just was all about love and what do you want to eat? Unlimited, you know, but it was Costco life, red vines, Costco donuts, Costco croissants, like all the, just the, the typical, you know, eighties family on a budget food. And, um, and my dad was really trying to bulk me up for basketball and my whole life, he wanted me to be this like basketball player and was, well, if you want to look like normal girls, you need to gain weight because you're too skinny. And so I got wired at a very young age to eat all the time, eat all the things. Cause I was trying to put on muscle and mm -hmm. wait so I could get in there with the big girls and play and um and I could never gain weight so it I had this wiring of I can't ever gain weight and then I'll never be accepted for for who I am because you know that there's obviously that story then I have that I have to eat all the things all the time to be accepted so um I ate all the time could never gain weight and then it finally caught up with me in high school uh in college and then fast forwarding, so you can see that wiring starting early, then fast forwarding into college career, I got very into um, health, I gained a lot of weight in college, because I kept eating, then I got really into health, moved to California, got really into holistic health and nutrition, and um, basically went all in on nutrition, and figured out, you know, supplements and just started figuring out everything, feeling really good and loving nutrition kind of went, went off the wall with nutrition, just, you know, every diet, every protocol, every, you know, intermittent fasting, vegan, vegetarian, keto, and got really, really, um, thrust out with my job to the point where I started numbing with food, even though I was in the health space, I started grabbing for any type of food to soothe the situation I was in, which was a very high stress job, um, VP of sales, um, you know, under the gun all the time. Like if you don't hit your numbers, you're, you're fired. Like that was for me for 10 years of my, my career, miss boss mode, you know, and because I had trouble with boundaries and people pleasing. Um, and that's another, you know, more, more, uh, more of that in my childhood, I would work till I would, till I would run myself into the ground and then just eat all the things to soothe. So food was always in my story. And it just, I think between my childhood, my work career life, that was, you know, a good chunk of time. And then, um, I had my biggest, most stressful point in my life where I numbed out on keto. Like I went all in on keto and I started, um, completely numbing with keto because it was that phase of, well, fat doesn't make you fat. So you can eat all the things. So that was my excuse. Cause it was like, oh, it's organic. It's healthy. It's, you know, it's fine. And it's, you know, it's healthy. And so I would eat just pints of ice cream, that keto ice cream, keto cookies, keto snacks, cause fat doesn't make you fat. So I was really just in denial most of my life, 
that no, I'm actually soothing something and it's not about the food. This is something else that's going on. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to admit that I had a problem because I was Miss Health Nut and I, I know all the things, right? I've been in the space for 15 years. So it was really a lot of denial. And finally, I saw a few pictures of myself, the most stressed out, miserable I had ever been in the height of my career, which I should have been so happy about. And I was the worst I've ever been. Um, I actually have a, a photo. There's a few I can actually show you. It was pretty nuts. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see this, but this is my gut. That's leaky gut. I look like six oh, months wow. pregnant, nine months yeah. pregnant. Yeah. And then there's, um, it's kind of hard to tell, but I was just, I just looked dead inside, you know? And I just said, what the hell is going on with me? I'm so knowledgeable about health. I know all these things when studying health and yet I'm the most miserable, stressed out mess. I look like I'm dead inside what's going on. So I decided to get to the bottom of it and, uh, start interviewing all of the health experts I've, I've worked with on emotional eating. And what is it up underneath that effort moment? What is actually really going on? Because we're craving something deeper and turns out it has nothing to do with food. And it's all the things that we're not looking at that, you know, for me, I just didn't have the tools. And once I learned, oh, this is what's happening in my brain. And this is the relationship with myself that I have. And this is actually what's really going on. You know, you can fix it. And so that I really went on a quest for myself to figure out what was going on with me. And 50 interviews later, what we crave was born. And, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on underneath emotional eating. And it's, it's just, I'm obsessed with learning, you know, what's underneath it. And when you find out it's so freeing to go, Oh, okay. I know now and I can fix it. And, and that's, that's how I got out of it. So long story long. <laughs> so how did you, I think yeah. there's a lot of people who, who yeah. are exactly what you were talking about. You yeah. know, they're super into fitness. They, they study all kinds of things. They know all kinds of things yep. and they feel they're doing it right. Um, yep. but they don't make that leap to no, there's more here. How did yeah. you get from, from this kind of textbook picture of what it's supposed to look like to know there's something more? Yeah, man, I would say it's such a good question because I started getting so curious. So I worked for Dr. Zach Bush, who's just a legend in this space. And he said, curiosity is the gateway. And I, I never understood what he meant by that. He, and he said, go stare at your hand for five seconds or for five, sorry, not five seconds, five minutes, go stare at a leaf for five minutes and really like tap in and you will trip yourself out on how magnificent we are as humans and how we are these divine creatures. And we have completely lost connection. Oh, I'm getting chills right now. We've completely lost connection to ourselves and how ma uh, just magnificent we are. And modern world will completely sever you from your, your connection with your soul, your purpose, with nature. And when you start tripping out on nature, that we're literally a planet floating in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a universe, and we're just magically here. And the planet's just in, the, in this, just sitting there, spinning, rotating perfectly and like going from that to, to the process of life and birthing life and just tripping out on your, on the, on the power of this innate intelligence and divine intelligence that surrounds us. That's what I really started. I got really, really curious. And I was like, oh my God, my body is amazing. We're here for a reason. Holy shit. Like what? And then I started having so much gratitude for my life that that is actually gratitude for this vessel that we're in and then gratitude for my life and everything that's around me and that I showed up here for a reason that was really the key for me that everything in your life that's a painful situation or just a mess that is supposed to be part of your message to go help the world so when you really start tapping into that and then you're like oh my god this is my greatest mess I can go help people mm. it lights a fire in you that yeah. and then life gets really magical because I started showing up for my life and life started showing up for me. And that's, that's how I think, but it all starts when we realize that we're totally disconnected from that and you have to get yourself back and reconnect. Yeah, I totally, yeah, totally agree. So how did you yeah. connect that yeah. to your emotions? Sorry, say that again. How did you connect that to your emotions? Uh, what are you, a, well, okay, yeah. so I jumped ahead. Yeah. I'm assuming that yeah. what we crave is something emotional. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's all about emotions and it's about, uh, that we don't know how to, when something happens in our life, we don't know how to 
handle our emotions. You know, we don't have the tools to go, okay, I'm getting triggered. And instead of wanting to numb it, we have to actually dive into the trigger. And that's the last thing we want to do is, you know, when life, when shit hits the fan and when we get triggered or when something terrible happens, modern society has trained us, go have a beer, go out, go get hammered, go, um, go have sex, go party, go numb. Right. And when really the answers are actually, no, you got to go the opposite direction and you got to start digging into that trigger. And where did that come from? And it's actually, cause I remember I would point the boss, the finger at my boss, you know, like she's a bitch, she's a narcissist, this, this, this point, point, point. And then I, and then I started pointing it on myself yeah. going, where's your boundaries, right? Where's this lack of self-worth? Where's this lack of worthiness? Where's this lack of self-care? Uh, where, where's this lack coming from that you, you're going to let another human have power over you and treat you like that. And so it's really just a big mirror. I mean, emotional eating is literally an, a beautiful invitation to look at yourself and where you're disconnected from your worth and from just you. And so at the end of every conversation, I always ask, what is it that we're really craving mm -hmm. to all of my guests? And the answer is always love. And it's always you, you know, you're, you're just, you've been disconnected. So it's really, how do you, how do you reconnect to yourself? And usually the triggers are the gateway, the, the emotion that you're feeling is you've lost a connection to yourself and, um, and that's where you got to start looking. So, and then it's just a big emotional deep dive into all of it. <laughs> and, and it's always somehow in childhood, somehow our brain got wired into, you know, um, a, a limiting belief or a pattern. And we just, we get, we're caught in a loop and we're not broken. We just have to get into that loop and uh, dismantle it and figure out what it is that we actually need. And again, that's the emotional side of, of the, of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with everything that you're saying. I, I think that when you get real basic, there's just two things, love and fear. And when you connect yes. to love, then everything just rebalances itself. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about food or your job or anything. It's, it's always super basic. Super oh my basic. gosh. And when you figure that out, it is so freeing. Yeah. Because you go, oh, I know what I need now. And so that's, that was my goal of the summit is give everyone the tools, give it to them for free, go help a ton of people with this. And because it's so freeing, I feel like there's a lot of coaches out there that, and a lot of moderate, you know, weight watchers and all these like things that were just, they're designed to keep you stuck in this loop. Right. And then when you finally yeah. figure yeah. it out, it's so easy. Like, I, I just could not believe how easy the answers were. I just didn't have the tools, you know? So like you said, yeah, it all comes down to love and, and, and so many things that have nothing to do with food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. do you have like a top 10, um, list of things that you learned? Cause I'm sure there's a lot of people who need yeah. to hear this and I'm probably tuning out. No, you're not talking about me, but we are talking about, uh -huh. <laughs> I know, I know. Right. Well, how much time do you have? <laughs> because man, I, I mean, with over 50 interviews, I learned so much and I just want to make sure I'm cautious of our time. Um, so I can definitely give you the top, the top, you know, things I learned, um, that are probably the best connected to your, to your audience. Um, one, the one that was hit me like a ton of bricks. It was the hardest thing to swallow, but it hit me like a lightning bolt was I interviewed Trisha Nelson and she said, you don't have an eating problem. You have a living problem. Mm -hmm. And I, oh God, just right to my soul. And because I was working you know, number one in an abusive, uh, like verbally abusive, uh, work workspace that I didn't even realize was abusive. I just thought that was normal corporate life Two, Um, I was working 12 to 14 hours a day going East coast to West coast, uh, once a week. So my sleep was a disaster. Mm -hmm. I was, I was living off of airplanes, hotel rooms, uh, and office spaces that had horrible fluorescent lighting, no clean air. I was never out in nature. I was never hugging anybody. I was literally living that hotel life completely disconnected from humans. Uh, and then when I would try and work out, it would be at 5 AM, you know, which was then 2 AM Pacific time. And right. I was just my cortisol, my ghrelin, my leptin. And then I would come home and crash and, um, work till midnight. And then I would do it all over again. And then when I would actually come home to my home, I would just binge eat. And then, um, I would also binge shop. I'd go online retail therapy. I would just, 
swipe, like, give me the yoga pants. Let's go on the ski trip. <laughs> I was just trying to soothe something because I was so disconnected from myself. I was just trying to like feel and just treat myself because I was so miserable, but I did that all to myself. It was all me. I chose that job. I chose to stay and I chose to let somebody control my life. And, um, out of threat of, of, of being fired and a scarcity mindset and not trusting my own abilities, all that thing. So I got myself in about 30 grand worth of debt over about six years. And I just, at that point, I didn't care. I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Swipe, swipe, swipe. And I noticed that when you're in a chaotic living situation, it'll, it'll get its tentacles into every area in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you start to clean up your debt, I noticed, oh, I started, I, I left California. I moved, I got out of a toxic job and I started cleaning up my debt. And I noticed as I was cleaning up my life, my emotional eating started to get cleaned up too. Like mm -hmm. just, so it, it really has an mm -hmm. effect, impact in every area. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like soothing and numbing. They're all the same things. It's like, pick your poison. But when, again, when you start making those little changes to go, I'm, I'm done doing this, even if it's a little change, those little changes co compound over time. And you can, I made some serious strides, got myself out of debt, got a different job and got out of California. And that's when the weight started coming off. Like I had put on probably 30, 40 pounds of just keto life, um, mm. from stress and the weight started to come off once I got, once I changed my life and got out of the chaos and into peace. And so I know sometimes in seasons in life, we don't always have that possibility if we have kids or we're going through divorce or whatever. But again, it was just making the shifts that I could in my life in the season that you can to remove all the toxic stuff as much as you can and just really focus on peace and um, nurturing yourself and nourishing yourself from the inside out. So, and that's when I started filming interviews for what we crave. So I, I started cleaning up my life, started filming the interviews and as I started to learn those interviews, I also noticed that, that weight loss started to happen naturally because I started learning all these tools. And so that was one of the biggest tools. Um, and uh, the second one was gut health. I know that's something that we hear all the time, but when you start removing the things out of your diet that are busting open your gut um, and you start cleaning up the mess in your gut, so not only in your life, but in your gut, right? You got to clean that up too. Um, and you start to repair the damage, the gut brain connection is vital for emotional eating because if your gut's wrecked, your brain's going to be wrecked. If your gut is a mess, it's not going to be able to produce the dopamine, serotonin. That's where all that stuff is made. And those are your feel good chemicals. So good luck trying to get out of emotional eating if your gut's wrecked. So when you start cleaning up your gut, you're going to have better brain chemistry. So you're not going to be needing to reach for the dopamine hits outside of yourself. Like the chocolate, the sugar, the cake, whatever, because your gut's going to be repaired and it's going to start producing uh, dopamine and serotonin on its own. So I, I interviewed Zach Bush for that. And um, his product, Ion Gut Health, is phenomenal for, for cleaning up the mess in your gut and sealing up all the leaks and restoring your gut health. So I would definitely recommend that one to anybody who's got the, the leaky gut. We basically all have leaky gut um, because we've all had sugar, antibiotics, stress, all that. So that's massive, especially with how many environmental toxins are in the environment today. Everyone needs to be on a gut support product because it's just, we're just in a chemical soup nowadays in our environment. Um, and then the next one is sleep. I, I had so many practitioners that would come up to me and be like, girl, you're not breathing. You're not sleeping. You're a stressed out mess. If you would just sleep, you would, you would cure so many of your problems <laughs> with your, with your eating addiction and all that. I'm like, whatever you can sleep when you die. I miss boss, babe. I miss boss, bitch FOMO you know, YOLO, like, I don't care. I'm going, I'm going like full balls to the wall with life and working out and traveling. I didn't listen, you know? And then, <laughs> and then again, I was just stressed out mess. Right. And when I actually started to sleep, um, and I actually got deep sleep that changed my cravings and my emotional eating 10 X. That's actually, I feel like one of the, if, if you don't sleep, nothing else matters. You have to sleep and you have to get deep sleep. So I interviewed Barton Scott uh, with upgraded formulas. And he, I don't get paid to say that this is just to help, but he has a magnesium that gives you the most, just best, deepest, most nourishing sleep. Cause it, the, the magnesium, just a very high quality, highly absorbable form. And I, of course me being the supplement snob, I was like, sure, sure, sure. I'll take it. We'll see. And then it changed my life. And I, I preach that till the day the wheels fall off. <laughs> it is 
I woke up going, oh my God, I don't have cravings. I'm not stressed out. My body feels so calm. What is this? You know, and just game changer. And we're all, I mean, we need minerals. They are a vital yeah. part of our health. And if you don't get minerals in your diet or in your life, you will be a stressed out mess because we are built from minerals. So most of us are just redlining ourselves every day with, and when you don't have minerals, you can't function. So good luck again, trying to get out of life, life stressors and good luck trying to get out of any type of addiction when you don't have minerals in your system. So, um, minerals in general, but magnesium specifically for sleep, um, was game over for me. And so that's another big one. And, and the beautiful thing about all of these things is you do one of these and it has like 10, it's like a domino effect. It's got 10 different benefits that come off of just one thing, like getting sleep. Right. So many, so many good things happen from sleep. So many mm-hmm. good things happen from gut health. Um, so many things happen when you reduce your stress. Uh, another one, and this is going to sound so easy, but, and I know, you know, this Laura is just uh, human connection. Yeah. Like I, when we lose our human connection, we were a mess and we're, we're designed to hug people, to be with people, to be around community. And I lost all of that. And so uh, I, for years, and no wonder my emotional eating, you know, I was trying to fill a void, that human connection void with food. I wasn't having sex. I wasn't getting hugs. I, I was completely disconnected from my family. They live in a different state. So my boyfriend was airplanes and hotel rooms, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, that's, again, I lost myself. And then I was also nature deficient. That's another one. I, yeah. I wasn't getting out in nature. I wasn't getting sunshine on my skin. Um, I was stuck in an office. So when I brought back in nature by moving to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and getting out of California, <laughs> being back in the mountains and the lakes and just uh, forest bathing, as they like to say, where you just yeah. walk in forest. Holy shit. What a difference. Yeah. And then I started hugging. I went around my, I got around more of my friends and my nephews and just hugged the shit out of them. And I'm like, wow, I literally don't crave food right now because my nephews are feeding my soul, my friends, my family. Um, And I know that sounds so easy, but it's so true. I mean, look at COVID. It put us, everyone was emotionally eating because we were all isolated, right? Yeah. Uh, We're wired to be together. And as much as the media wants to tell you, isolate yourself, I did the complete opposite. I went all in on nature. I went outside. I started hugging people. And um, anyways, and then- uh, let's see another one. This is going to sound so easy too, but someone told me this years ago and it was just eat whole food. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> and as easy as that sounds, it's not easy for an emotional eater because we want to eat the fun bingey cookie snack thingies. And I, cause I was like, I was always eating snacks as I was traveling, living mm-hmm. that snack life. And my, I remember one of my friends who's a coach said, Hey girl, you realize that that all that snacky food is just going to keep you craving snacks because your body actually needs whole food. So it's going to always be hungry because that's not whole food. It's a snack. It's a pro it's something that comes in a package, even if it's organic and keto and paleo and gluten-free, it is a processed snack and your body doesn't jam with that. So you need real food. And when you eat real food, your cravings will go way down. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to believe that because one, I love my keto paleo donuts and I love my keto ice cream and all the things I didn't want to let go of it. (laughs) But I just started, it was like, I can't make that complete swap, but what I can do is start integrating more real food. And, and I just focused on adding more of the good stuff in versus restricting and pulling things out. I just started adding more whole food. So yeah, people are always like, what's whole food? Isn't food whole food? I'm like, no, it is one ingredient. Mm-hmm. So I would have a plate of salmon with, you know, roast, uh, like just blackened salmon with, with olive oil and sea salt. And then a beautiful bed of like greens or Brussels sprouts or broccoli with some sweet potato. And when I would have that plate, my cravings went, were smashed and I felt so nourished and so full and I didn't crave anything else. And I had this aha moment of, Oh my God, is this what they're talking about? This is freedom. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I mean, it took me 10 years to even attempt to just eat real food. And cause I didn't want to hear it. I didn't, I didn't think it would work anyways. And then the more I integrated more real food, whether that's an apple and peanut butter or just, you know, a protein, a healthy fat and a healthy carb for lunch, dinner, you know, what, whatever, whatever works with your life, just add more real food in and watch your cravings go way down because I, 
I just think I was using healthy snacks to soothe for so long that I didn't want to get rid of them. So I would still Mm -hmm. keep one. I would still have one a day, but I would really emphasize the whole food. And then slowly things just started to dissipate. And again, I just lost weight naturally because I wasn't just constantly hungry all the time. And also another one is swapping out your toxic oils. I would, when I was in California, I would eat out all the time. And a lot of restaurants, even if they're healthy, will use canola oil. Same with whole foods. They use canola oil and that stuff inflames your body so bad. It's worth, it's worse than cigarette smoke because you can't filter uh, processed oils like canola and any type of man-made oil. Oh my gosh. Just swapping that out for avocado oil or olive oil or uh, coconut oil. My, the inflammation in my face went down. The inflammation in my body went down, lost weight naturally. And again, it was like an easy swap that wasn't even painful. It wasn't like, oh, you're taking away my life. It was just a beautiful, easy swap. Game changer. Um, another one, let's see, am I doing, are we doing okay on time? <laughs> I'm just plowing through these. <laughs> another one that's more emotional. Um, actually, let me add a couple more in. One was adding superfood powders into my diet. Um, I started doing that like 10 years ago. Nano greens is the best tasting, cleanest, most high potent one. It's in San Diego, um, started for cancer patients a long time ago. It's the best tasting, cleanest, high vibe superfood I've ever tried. Using that uh, dropped my cravings down and my emotional eating down because you're just giving yourself such a high nutrient load. And when your body has everything it needs, you're less likely to reach for right. something else. Yeah. So I just remember that was, again, I'm just adding in nourishment. That was the key, just adding in nourishment, no neglect. And that changed the game for me with cravings too, because that's what your body's designed to run off of is real food. Another mm-hmm. one um, that was huge is looking at the emotional aspect um, is looking at your past and all your triggers. and um, really tapping into where did I learn all these behaviors in the first place? Cause mm-hmm. it really doesn't, if you can't get to the root, you know, you got, that's what I'm all about is root cause. Right. So the emotional triggers, uh, that I learned that I had was all out of worthiness. So I interviewed Angela Bell on worthiness and that that is where the flag in the ground is, um, at the core of this summit is where did we learn that we're not good enough? Where did we learn that we have to seek validation outside outside ourselves because when we when we lose our connection to worthiness to our power to who we are as humans when we love ourselves there isn't that need to go prove it outside of ourselves and there isn't that disconnection where we need to soothe right so i learned at a very young age if i'm not perfect then i'm not accepted that's a religious thing i was taught with my dad with church and a whole bunch of other stuff but looking at where did all of this stuff come up from that makes you want to reach for the food to soothe, like what it, what's underneath that. And so triggers, traumas, past, uh, limiting beliefs. Those are all critical to look at. Um, let's see, there's so many, um, (laughs) but yeah, like knowing your, your worth, like our, our worth doesn't change. It's our perception of our worth that and our experience of worth that changes. And it's because what, again, when you, you know, you can, you showed up for a reason and you're not just floating around on this planet, just randomly that you're here for a reason. When you have a really fulfilling purpose and you feel called to do something in your life, it, it will feed your soul in ways that food never will. And so with what we crave, that was my, one of my biggest purposes. I feel like I'm meant to bring this to the world. And when I'm doing these interviews, I'm not hungry. I'm not thinking about food. I am so filled with purpose. I'm just lit up on fire. And that is a huge piece of it too, is when we're just living our life without any purpose, we tend to, we'll just tend to reach for things to give us something to feel because we don't feel alive uh, on the inside. Um, so on. how yeah. can, how can people connect this uh, summit that you keep talking about? Where is it? Yeah. Where- yeah. That would probably help. Wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> you can go to um, what we crave.com is the website and you just put your email in and it's free to watch. It's nine days worth of interviews. There's about five a day and you just, it's like a big, you know, almost like a, a conference. You take a few days and just watch all the interviews and it's free and that's it. So obviously, awesome. yeah, obviously they can buy a copy if they want, but you don't have to, it's free to watch. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of, my goal was to pack as much value as I could. 
Um, because by the time I was done filming these interviews, my brain naturally almost knew what to do because I kept listening over and over again. So yeah, yeah. even just listening will start to rewire the brain, you know, but doing is the other piece that we gotta, we gotta do the work too. But, uh, it's, it was a great first step for me is just learning, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So, and there's more, but I feel like, are we over our time? Cause I want to make sure I'm in your, I could talk forever on this stuff. Yeah. Very good. So we're, yeah. we're. What's the website? Yeah, it's whatwecrave.com. Whatwecrave.com. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, thank I you. Laura. Forever too. Yeah. I know. There's so many things. So many things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. appreciate you being here with us today. And um, thanks everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate it.